This video was made possible by Dashlane. Stay safe online for free for 30 days at dashlane.com slash H-A-I. All right, so here's the question. How much does the US president get paid? Seems easy enough, right? At first glance, you'd think that this is one of those questions where I should be able to just tell you a number and then you go on your merry way exploring the rest of what YouTube has to offer. Rap battles, trick basketball shots, people falling down staircases, and even lame plane videos from that guy at Wendover Productions. But of course, if things were really that simple, this video would only be 10 seconds long, which is hardly enough time for someone to fall down a staircase, let alone to fill an entire HAI video. The truth is that the answer is, as usual, a little bit more complicated than you might first think. Now, we're going to get down to talking cold hard cash soon enough, but first, let's address the elephant in the room. He's right here, and his name is Gary. Now that we've addressed that, let's answer a looming question. Why does the president even need a salary? After all, don't they get to live for free in a big white house with a fancy staff and private plane and those cool M&Ms with the presidential seal on them? Well, yes, but also no. See, it turns out that despite what most people think, life in the White House isn't totally free. While it is true that presidents don't have to pay rent or utilities in the White House, they do have to pay for almost everything else. One of the most significant costs is food. The White House has its own kitchen staff, but presidents aren't given some sort of win 270 electoral votes get one meal free coupon. The cost of every meal that kitchen whips up for the first family gets tallied and put into an itemized bill to be paid at the end of the month, and while the salary of the chef who makes that food is covered by the government, not all staff costs are. For example, when the president throws a private White House party, they have to pay not only for the food and beverages, but also for the wait staff, servers, cleanup crew, and anything else that could be at a White House party, like, I don't know, a pinata shaped like Congress. Plus, the president has to pay for everything else that a normal person might need. Toothpaste, shampoo, well, except for Eisenhower, those little American flag pins, a Netflix subscription, and of course, clothes, which can get quite expensive, especially for the first lady, who is generally expected to wear different expensive designer outfits to a wide array of events, because, you know, sexism. Now, for official presidential business, the federal government does pick up the tab, so the president isn't stuck for paying things like state dinner, secret service, Air Force One, and so on, which often leads to controversy that we're going to give a big wide berth and not address in the slightest. For anything personal though, taxpayers aren't expected to cover the bill, which means that when JFK wanted a midnight snack, and I don't mean Marilyn Monroe, I mean like a sandwich or something, he had to pay out of his own pocket. Now that we've talked about why the president needs money, let's talk about the money itself. The president's salary is set by Congress, and Congress has voted to raise that salary six times, mostly just so that it keeps up with inflation. One interesting little wrinkle of this power is that under Article 2, Section 1, Clause 7 of the Constitution, Congress cannot raise the president's salary for the current term, only for future terms. That is, if Congress votes to raise the president's salary, that raise doesn't take effect until after the next presidential election. This provision is presumably in place to prevent corruption in the Oval Office, which so far has been working out great. The first ever US presidential salary went to, of course, the first ever US president, George Washington, who was paid $25,000 a year. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but when you adjust for inflation, in 1789, when Washington took office, $25,000 was worth about $720,000 in 2019 dollars, at least according to the CPI index, which is what I'm going to use for all these inflation calculations because even though I know there are a bunch of different ways to calculate inflation, this is the one I like, and if you have a problem with that, you can leave an angry comment below because comment engagement means YouTube's algorithm prioritizes the video more. That's right, commenters, your anger only makes me stronger. Anyways, the president's salary stayed at $25,000 until 1872, at which point, Congress raised the president's salary to $50,000, starting with the second term of Ulysses S. Grant. In 2019 dollars, Grant was making about $1.1 million. That lasted until 1908, when the salary was up to $75,000 starting in 1909 for the first term of William Howard Taft, giving him the highest inflation-adjusted salary of any president, nearly $2.2 million in 2019 dollars. In 1948, we saw another rise, which took place in the middle of Truman's two terms. As of his second term, which started in 1949, he made $100,000, or just under $1.1 million in 2019 dollars. In 1968, Congress doubled it, which meant that starting in 1969, the president, now Richard M. Nixon, made $200,000, or about $1.4 million in 2019 dollars. That salary lasted all the way through the end of Bill Clinton's second term in 2000, when it was doubled once more to $400,000 or about $600,000 in 2019 dollars. And now in 2019, it sits at $400,000, which in 2019 dollars would be $400,000. 
Now, there are a few additions to that $400,000 salary, a $50,000 expense account, a $100,000 non-taxable travel account, and a $19,000 entertainment account. Plus, when the president moves in, they get $100,000 to redecorate the White House however they'd like, but apart from that, and the private jet, and the private helicopter, and the secret service, and the millions they'll make giving talks once they leave office, they don't get anything else. Being president truly is a hard knock life. Being president, there are a lot of things you have to remember. The nuclear codes, 10 Downing Street's address, your tea times, so you really don't have time to remember things like all your passwords. Especially as president, you need to make sure that you're using safe, complex passwords that look like this rather than simple ones like this. That's why, when you become president, or maybe even before, you should use Dashlane as your password manager as it will generate and keep all these super secure passwords unique to each of your accounts behind a single super super secure password that you have to remember and then autofills them when you go to log in. This is sure to beef up your online security, and then Dashlane Premium also includes a bunch of other tools that keep you safe online like a VPN, breach alerts, secure file storage, and much more. All of that is for a very low monthly price, less than most standalone VPNs, and can be free for 30 days if you sign up at dashlane.com slash HAI. After that trial lapses, you can then use the code HAI for 10% off upgrading to premium.